in the Bible to 1 Peter chapter number 1. I would like to bring just a few words about joy because of Jesus Christ, who I think we could declare to be the author of joy, the greatest of which is our salvation. In 1 Peter chapter number 1, the Bible says, verse number 8, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's kind of interesting to consider that we, I believe, know more about the birth of Jesus Christ than any other man in history, all of history. If you stop to think about it, we know about his pre-existence. We know of the prophecies of to where he was to be born. We know of the reason he was to be born. We know when he came, uh, B.C., A.D. I know the world has tried to change that and so on, but the world will never change God Almighty. God will change the world, but the world will not change the Lord. And in this business of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what other birth has brought so much joy and so much rejoicing than that of Jesus Christ our Lord? To bring about a holiday season such as Christmas, and I am delighted personally to hear the revival of Merry Christmas over Happy Holidays. And I am thankful for the joy that our Lord brings. As I think about this joy, all I can say is with the Apostle Peter, it is unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Words cannot describe it. And yet there are a few things that I think are good to look at as I think about the joy of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One of them is found according to Luke's Gospel as well as Matthew's Gospel. And that is, it is great joy. And that was at the birth of Jesus Christ. For at the birth, surrounding the shepherds, as well as the wise men, the magi, we have, they came with great joy, and they departed from that scene with great joy. We not only have great joy at the birth of Jesus Christ, but lo and behold, there was great joy at Calvary. That may sound odd. What joy when our Lord is put on the cross and lifted up to die there? Yes, great joy because he didn't stay in the grave. Three days later he came out of the grave. The Bible says again in Matthew chapter 28 and Luke chapter number 24 that they departed with fear and great joy. That word fear has the idea of reverence behind it. They departed from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and they worshipped him. And then I think also that we ought to say there is great joy in the gospel message. 
For instance, in this one I'll ask you to turn to in the Bible. In Acts chapter number 8, while it is true that there was the persecution by Saul, later known as the Apostle Paul, of the Christians, having put Stephen to death, the gospel message began to be heralded everywhere. In Acts chapter number 8 and verse number 4, the Bible says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits were crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Now look at verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. The gospel was preached, brothers and sisters. The word of God, written and incarnate, was brought out. And there was great joy in that city. I want to ask you, what other figure in all of the history of mankind has brought the level of joy that Jesus Christ our Lord has brought. And the fact of the business is this great joy is because he came to die on the cross for our sins. That we might have forgiveness of sin. That we might have eternal life with him in heaven. Else we would spend eternity in hell. For there is no other way. When we were yet without strength, we couldn't save ourselves. God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And the Bible says, and finally I bring this to our attention, that there is joy in heaven among the angels over one sinner that repents and come to Christ as Savior. Well, it may be described in this vein, perhaps. You who are here tonight, and you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can give testimony to yes, there is salvation in the shed blood of the Lord. You can give witness of that burden being lifted when you were under the conviction of sin, realizing in all truthfulness that you were deserving, me too, to spend an eternity away from God who is righteous and always righteous. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I say those of you who are here tonight and you've been to the cleansing fountain. You've been, as it were, to the cross. You have, as it were, gone to Calvary. I know in spiritual form only. I doubt any of us have literally been to Calvary yonder at Jerusalem. But we can go there just as real in the Spirit. And I say those of you who are here and you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you wouldn't trade Him for anything in the world. You would
would not give him up for anything, you realize that in him is life, and he alone is the giver of that life. No much wonder there's joy in heaven over a sinner that comes to Jesus Christ as Savior. I remember the day when I came to Christ. Do you remember that day? I remember kneeling down there at that chair and asking Christ to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and to be my Savior. No lightning struck. No tornadoes went by. No course of heavenly angels did I hear in my ears. But the burden was lifted just as sure as if there had been the whole earth shaken by the Lord. And there is joy in my heart because I know the Lord as my Savior. There is joy in my heart even in the midst of a world that seems to be decaying and overall going away from the Lord. I don't intend to go away from the Lord. I intend to keep walking with the Lord and upon the authority of the Word of God. One day, that joy unspeakable will be realized by me when I stand before the Heavenly Father, complete in Jesus Christ our Savior. Bear me witness, is there any other figure in all of history that can bring the joy Jesus can bring? I will say this in closing, that if you cannot bear witness to that joy in Christ, I'd like to invite you to get saved tonight. For to me, that would be the only reason why you couldn't bear witness to that joy. You know Him not as your Savior. And I give testimony tonight that Christ is real, but you've got to come to Him for yourself. My knowing the Lord will not help save but for the witness that I can give to you. And I would like for us to stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. I'd like to have a time of...